Season 4, Episode 3 of The Chosen, a lot of spicy stuff in here, but one thing that's really cool is all the scripture that they put all throughout it, not only talking about the man that was born blind, but also diving into some really unique te teachings from Jesus, taking different things from different parts of the Gospels and placing them in this moment here in order to teach the crowd, but also interact with the Pharisees. So let's jump into the show right here as we jump into this moment, this scene uh, full of scripture. Awesome stuff. The one that born. Blessed rather is the one who hears the word of God and keeps... Okay, so you might not have heard that, uh, but right at the beginning of this scene, I'll kind of rewind it so you can hear it again. Um, it says something very interesting here. Right at Blessed is the one that born. Blessed rather is the one who hears the word of God and keeps it. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So All right, so we see that section right here. <clears throat> we hear, blessed is the one who bore you. And he says, blessed rather are these other people, right? So that jumps us into um, Luke chapter 11. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice, which is what we just heard. It's kind of under the tone of everything, so they kind of hid this in here. But it says, blessed is the womb who bore you, uh, that bore you. And she they cut out this part here because they probably didn't want to use the word breast. <laughs> Um, and the breast, uh, which you nursed. So the woman says, blessed is the womb who bore you, uh, that bore you and the breast at which you nursed. And then he said, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. <clears throat> and so that's a big thing there. We're also going to see this section right here. This generation is an evil generation. It seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given, uh, to it except the sign of Jonah. And so we're going to see that in a second here as well. Of us weren't here when you healed the blind man. Show us another sign. I know you want more signs and wonders, so you can believe for sure. And I have done them. But it is an evil generation that seeks a sign. And when all you seek are signs and wonders, no sign will be given to you. So he's telling them what the frame of their heart is. The frame of the heart is, oh, you want to see all these miracles and stuff because you want to know for sure. You don't want to have to rely on faith. You don't want to have to believe in me. You just want to do this, right? And so he's talking to them about, about what is going on here. Where are they in their hearts, okay? <clears throat> and so he's going to dive into this a bit more, but we see in the scriptures, Luke chapter 11, um, this generation is the evil generation that seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so will the son of man be to this generation. And there's a lot of connection points here between the sign of Jonah and Jesus here, but we'll get, it to, we'll get back to that in a second. Except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. You would proclaim yourself greater than Solomon? What right would the Queen of Sheba have to judge us? <laughs> Again, the Pharisees aren't quite getting it here. They're not sure kind of what's going on, uh, and they're just arguing with him because he sounds like he's wrong, right? Uh, and so we see here, Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. Then he goes on to talk about the Queen of the South will rise up, the judgment of, the, of uh, with the men of this generation, and condemn them, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation, and condemn it for they represent they represent they repent at the preaching of jonah and behold something greater than jonah is here so jesus is obviously talking about himself here he's saying that he's greater than solomon and he's greater than jonah let's just take jonah for example and the connections here that we have with jonah one jonah was in the belly of a whale for three days right Jesus is going to be in the ground for three days he's going to be in, in a tomb and on the third day he will rise right and so as Jesus, as Jonah was in the whale, Jesus will be in the tomb. It's the same thing they're connecting there. However, Jesus is greater than Jonah. Why? Because he went to these cities and he talked to these people and he did miracles for them and he did all these different things and yet they still did not listen. So much so that he ended up cursing three cities, right? He says, woe to you, Capernaum, woe to you, Chorazim, and woe to you, Bethsaida, for I did all of these miracles in you and none of you, none of you recognized who I was, even though I gave you the 
most out of anybody else, right? And so here he's saying it's a wicked generation that just wants to see these miracles over and over again. And Jonah went to the Ninevites and he talked to them and without doing any miracles, they believed. And yet I'm doing all of these things. You've seen them over and over again and yet you demand more and you still won't believe until I give you more. And so I'm not gonna do that, right? He's saying that the people of Nineveh would judge you because you don't believe, even though you've given all, you've been given all this stuff, you've been given all of these miracles to look at, you've been given all of these moments of grace from the Messiah, and yet you still don't believe. The people of Nineveh would have been way far above you, right? He says the same thing when he's, when he's cursing these, these cities. He says, better is it going to be in the last days for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah than it is for you, right? Showing that they have really messed up here. They have really messed up in not believing who Jesus is, even though they've been given these signs and wonders. And so he's showing here that there's a big issue here with what these people are doing. Uh, They're getting stuck in the miracles. They're getting stuck in what they shouldn't rather than just believing in him in the first place. But before we get to that, I want to invite you to go to Israel with us. I know that these videos are great and you're learning a lot through this series, but there is nothing like being there in person and seeing exactly what happens in Israel, what there is, what there is to learn and the people to meet, the food to eat, everything. This next trip that I've planned is the cheapest that I can possibly get these trips. Normally they're five or six or $7,000, but my trip here is less than $4,000. We'd love for you to be a part of it. And if you can at all sign up, there's a link down in the description down below, or you can take your phone's camera and point it at this QR code and it'll take you directly to the site. From there, you can check out our brochure and see exactly what we're doing, and you can even save your spot with a $500 deposit. As you're seeing here, we had some of the most amazing moments in our last trip to Israel, and we'd love for you to be part of the next one. So don't wait, sign up today. Spots are limited as always, and let's get back to the video. Ah, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Josiah, we're back. (laughs) Are you wanting to better understand my teaching? Perhaps. You heard our questions. Well, let me make it more plain. The men of Nineveh will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The men of Nineveh were evil. Yes, but even they were qualified to judge this generation. Because at least they repented when Jonah preached. Is anyone writing this down? It must be recorded. (laughs) I love how both of them are are writing it down. Word for word, so it can be held up in the Sanhedrin and exposed for the contemptible insolence even his followers espouse. You've interrupted him enough. We want to hear more. Ah. So it's infectious. Like a disease, this heretic's arrogance and insubordination spreads quickly among Capernaum's uneducated class. And here is where Jesus kind of turns his attention towards the Pharisees and he jumps in uh, as he talks throughout this next section here. I just spoke to a man who claims you healed his blindness. Today. On Shabbat. (laughs) Is there a question coming? I was told you put mud on his eyes. Where did you get mud knowing you're not supposed to make healing concoctions on Shabbat? It was easy. I just spit on the dirt. What? You touched his face with filth. Cleanliness. That's what you're focused on? You claim to be a rabbi, to be the son of God, and you don't honor purity laws even on the most sacred day of the week. You Pharisees. You cleanse the outside of a cup and the dish, and then you eat and drink food that goes into a body that inside is full of greed and wickedness. So we see Jesus here going into Matthew 23, which is the seven woes to the Pharisees. We've, We've talked about this before, but Jesus really goes in here talking about all the things that the Pharisees are, are exemplifying as these leaders that they are just failing at. Um, they're supposed to be these really strong leaders that are doing these things and following the law and being the best of the Jewish people. And yet they are leading these people into hell. Woe to you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they're full of greed and self indulgence. So these Pharisees are 
they are focused on themselves. Why is Rabbi Akiva so keen on catching Jesus in his words? Because he wants to be promoted, because he wants to be part of the great Sanhedrin, because he wants to be a better Jew, because he wants to follow the law to the best of his ability. Some of the things that he's doing are for a good purpose. He wants to follow God to the best of his ability. But in doing so, his pride has taken over, right? And so in all of this, he looks really good on the outside, but nobody really knows what he's like when he's in his, you know, his his home or when he's in the secret, right? We don't know what he's doing and, and how he's acting. And so Jesus is calling them out because they often are so perfect on the outside, but so horrible on the inside. And then they, they, they call themselves perfect, right? They, they, they say that they're following the law perfectly when, when, when they can't, they're human. You fools, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give as alms those things that are within and behold, Everything is clean for you. Are you saying giving alms is more important than being ritually I'm clean? I'm saying that your obsession with what is clean and unclean goes farther than God intended and does no good for anybody but yourself. We tithe. Just like Jesus talks about all throughout the Sermon on the Mount, um, this is what Jesus does. He says, you've heard it this way. The leaders of the law have taught it this way, but I'm telling you they interpreted it wrong, right? I'm telling you they're, they're telling you the wrong things to do, right? You've heard it said that this is adultery, but I'm telling you actually it's much, much harder to follow. And there's no way that you can follow this law to the best of your ability because or there's no way that you can follow this law perfectly because you can't, you are human. You are going to break the law. And so the only way is to have someone that takes your place is to have someone that is, can be your savior. Right. Um, and so through all of this, it's, it's a really interesting thing that he's doing the same thing here where he's kind of correcting them because they have taken the law and they've twisted it and, and changed it into something that it was never meant to be. Everything so the poor can benefit down to the smallest plants grown in our garden. And to that, I say, woe to you Pharisees. You tithe mint and dill and cumin, measuring carefully the last speck while neglecting what is actually important of the law. Justice and mercy and faithfulness. You blind guides straining out an act while swallowing a camel. So he's really going in here. We're going to see this again with Jesus, I believe, in season five, where he's really going to talk to the Pharisees in, in, in a harsh way. He was very harsh with them because they knew, like, they should have known, I should say. They should have known what they were doing is not the law. They are learned people. They memorize the entire Old Testament, right? These are not stupid people. Um, and so they should have known. They should have seen these connections more than anybody towards the Messiah, and yet they didn't. At least many of them didn't. Look at these people. <laughs> I'll, I'll rewind that again. I have to point this out because it just, it annoys me every time I see it. Ever since we saw the first version of this scene, whenever Jesus turns around, um, when it goes to the next shot, he's turning the wrong way. <laughs> so I always just see this and I laugh at it every time. Swallowing a camel. Watch. Look at these people. You see him turned uh, to his right, right? Uh, or, yeah, to his right. And then he's going to turn back. But then when we cut to the next shot, he's turning from the left. <laughs> it's just funny to me. What have you done to help them? <laughs> we have taught them how to observe God's perfect law. What you actively defy and break and encourage others to deviate from it. All of you, this man is dangerous. So they think he's dangerous because he's taking the oral law and the traditions of the time and he's telling people basically don't do that. <laughs> like what they're telling you is wrong. Now the Pharisees are saying, oh, he's telling them what we say is wrong. Well, what he says is wrong. And they're kind of fighting back here. Leading you astray. His words bring hope and healing. Rivka again there. Words are blasphemous, heretical. And I say woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace. Take it back. Right now, they can't hear insulting words. Oh, I am just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> So crazy stuff. That's when everything kind of breaks out and there's craziness there. But Jesus actually did this. He actually had these conversations with the Pharisees, not in Capernaum, uh, at least not super often in Capernaum. Uh, I believe Matthew 23 is happening in Jerusalem here. So it's a little bit different here, but um, yeah, it's uh, interesting stuff. In, in Jerusalem, it's even 
more important, right? Because Jerusalem is the holy city. It's the place where the temple is, where the presence of God is, right? Um, where the veil is and the ark used to be. Um, and so there's a bunch of stuff there that's super, super important. This is the only place where the Jews can go in order to worship their God, uh, at least in, in, in the best way to sacrifice and do all the things they needed to do, right? And so Jesus is trying to heal the city. He's trying to, to make sure that... Uh, what should be known should be known. And so he does an amazing job, obviously uh, doing that and telling them what the truth is. Uh, it's a perfect example for us as we go out day to day. Like, obviously I don't think we're going to go yelling at all the leaders of the law and telling them everything they do wrong. It's not our place to do that. It's Jesus's place. It's God's place. However, there are points in our life when we need to confront people like this who are leading people astray. And so this is a perfect example of that for sure. But Anyway, <laughs> great stuff. I love those scenes. I love those teachings that Jesus is doing. I love those little hidden moments there where they're adding in scripture where it's not like the front running moment, but it's still things that we can dive into and look at. So there's a lot of scripture in this episode for sure. A lot of really, really cool stuff. I hope you enjoyed that video. Right now we're doing daily chosen content. So if you want to see more of it, I'm sure there's more right here. Anyway, go check that one out and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.